My good morning, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California, and I came out to have my hot cup of coffee and some cookies I baked last night. Kind of semi real, you know, it's baked from a mix. It's a gluten free mix, but I changed it. I added in extra flour, a little extra butter. Well, I went with butter, and then I added in real chocolate chips because the one that came with it were really bad. And it just didn't taste good. Gary likes dark chocolate. And a little bit of brown sugar because they said it was chocolate chip cookies, but they added in analyzing what they have done. They added in molasses instead of brown sugar, which brown sugar has molasses. But if you looked at the texture of the, you know, cookie mix, it was white sugar with molasses. It wasn't real brown sugar. Oh, we have a visitor in the garden here. I'm not sure what it is. Let me see if we can zoom in and see. He doesn't know I'm here because I'm sitting back a little bit. If you can see, I don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to focus on the camera, so give me a minute. Oh my gosh, look at that! He's eating all the insects off. This is one I love. Is that cute? I think it's a Vero. I'll have to look it up. It's not a bush tent. See the big white eye ring? They're really shy. I rarely see them. This is what you want. He's in my chair garden. Look at him, he's a little eating machine. A little bit. Is that adorable? I hope I have it in focus, and if I don't, I'm sorry, I'm auto-focus. I'm not auto, I'm manually focusing it, because my autofocus on my regular camera, which is my Sony HX400, wants to focus in the background, pick up the trees in the back, so I'm hoping I'm getting them good. This is a treat for me. I rarely see this. Anyways, let's, let me go back and keep talking. So I forgot already what I was talking about. Let me re- Oh, it is already. Let me see. Okay, we're good. Nope. Let me set my camera. In case something else comes along. Let's see. So anyways, I altered it and it came out really, really good. Now, I should have videotaped it while I did it so I don't forget. Oh, now he went into... No, he's still here. Isn't that cute? He's just going around picking up all the aphids and little bugs that are all over. This is what you want. This is why I don't have to use any pest control. Now he's going to my apple tree. It must be something in my apple tree. So anyways, that's what I did. So I came out here to have some cookies, and he's gone. And have some cookies, sit here, enjoy nature, and do a quick vlog on... Well, actually, I want to talk about something that I'm... I can't remember his name offhand, and that's okay. He knows who he is. He comes in all the time and tells me the tool doesn't work. Everything else works, he says, but the tool isn't working. I put tool out there, the squirrels tear it off. Put trolls out there, tool out there, and they do the... Well... He's uh, in a state where I'm wondering, and this is what I'm really wondering of what's going on. Now, first of all, let me back up for a second. There will be nothing, and yes, they're building the house still, and I ended up in the same spot because I came here to enjoy the birds. I want to say that not everything you do, or I do, or anybody does is going to be perfect. Nothing's going to be per perfect. There's always going to be an exception to the rule. Always. There's no way around it or life would be perfect for everybody and nobody would know what unperfect is. There's always gonna be somebody that tests it. Here, I'm fortunate enough that the animals are all wild enough to not like it. Occasionally, I lose something with tool because I went over to my Korean melon, tossed it on and didn't tie it on and the wind blew it off or they walked up to it and it fell off. But generally, everything I'm wrapping with tool is okay. Now, I did have one pack rat that figured out it wasn't that bad, the tool. So he did pull it off and he was moving it over. So what I did with that tool is I dipped it in vinegar, shook it out and put it back. He was getting into a toad of mine that I was composting in place. I knew it was a pack rat because we have pack rats and they're very intelligent. They're not regular rats, but they're very intelligent and they're different. They have a different mannerism. So when I dipped it in vinegar, there's another bird flying in the background, and put it back in the tote, that was the end of it. I got rid of him and he never came back again. So the vinegar deterred him because he doesn't like the smell and he just didn't want to deal with it because the vinegar didn't hurt the plants or anything in there. It just, you know, it threw them off. It totally threw them off. So you can try different things if you end up with something odd. Put some vinegar in a spray bottle and saturate the tool. Don't spray it on your plants, but just saturate the tool and see how that works. I see a raven up there. 
Oh, and a big yellow plane. Look at that. Look at that. Anyways, let's go back to that. So that's the other thing. But the thing I was wondering about is if he has so many issues, I am wondering if you've got somebody rehabbing squirrels, if it's a squirrel issue. Now, let me explain that. If you've got somebody that has picked up, it doesn't matter how many, it could be one, it could be 10. Rehab the squirrels, found the baby squirrel, rehabbed it, took care of it, raised it and let it go. Let me tell you, at that point, you no longer have a wild animal. You have an imprinted animal on people. And that you're not going to be able to deter because generally they don't think the same anymore. That's why it's so hard to rehab a lot of animals and just put them back in the wild because they haven't learned anything from mom. Mom hasn't told them, be careful. This is dangerous. Don't go near this. They haven't taught them to be leery. They haven't taught them to understand that there's danger out there. They've lost all that. Now, you may disagree with me on that, and that's perfectly fine. But think of the LA Zoo, what they went through, and the San Diego Zoo, all these zoos, to capture the last couple California condors, put them in a rehab, and raise them with puppets. Now, they could have easily handled them and raised them on their own by hand. It's done all the time. I know people that do it and have the most beautiful birds just like that. But here's the problem. Doing it that way, they would have been imprinted on people and there's a possibility of coming down on a person. Possibility of not wanting to eat. You know, looking at a person thinking they're gonna feed them. There's a lot of, lot of scenarios that could have happened with that. So what they did was they raised them with puppets never to see people as they were growing up. So they would only see this puppet that was supposed to be mom. Now, it's not perfect because mom isn't there to teach them, you know, the dangers here, come out with me. Like, like we had here, up here in the tree, we had the Cooper's Hawks. Now, they were raised with me working right here in my garden. And they do come to visit and they know people and they're so tame with people. They go to my neighbor's house and they go into her swimming pool and they're so used to people because they saw me out in the chair garden every single day. The four of them hung out, hung out and watched us in the garden. They scared me a few times because they would come down, two of them, and sit in the truck bed and watch me while I was working in the truck bed, literally feet from me. Or they would come over to the wall and sit on the edge of the wall. They didn't scare me that... I was afraid of them, but what I was a little leery of is would they attempt to land on me accidentally because even the tamest of the, the bird of prey are never handled without gloves because of the talons. I mean, they'll go right through you if they tried to land on you, even a friendly bird. So though they were raised in the wild by mom and dad right here in the tree, and they were raised there, and they knew danger, they knew, you know, mom and dad's not going down to visit these people. Mom and dad aren't doing anything. They knew enough, you know, by nature, you don't go near people. But when you're hand raising something, and people do, I see it all the time. They find the squirrel, something happened to mom, the babies crawl out, they're not weaned yet. They bring them in, they hand rear them, and then they let them go. Well, what are they going to do? They're now little people. Think of your dogs. Your dogs don't have that many wild traits that they normally would have. They're imprinted, they're little people. Gosh, I can tell you my dog that I lost quite a few years ago, she was amazing. It took me a year to get used to her. I'm gonna say she was kind of a rescue because somebody had her and she got passed around. Nobody wanted her. My daughter ended up getting her for me and I couldn't even figure her out. She was taken away by the original people at a matter of a couple weeks old in hand race. I don't know why. It was something they thought was imprinting. But they took her away, they bottle fed her and raised her, and by the time she was five weeks old to the people that raised her, she was a holy terror. So they gave her away to my daughter, and my daughter gave her to me, and I'm trying to figure this dog out. I mean, as she was getting older, she was so demanding. 
she'd walk over to the refrigerator and I would open it up because I, mean, I did spoil her. And if she, if I didn't hand her out of the refrigerator what she wanted, she'd bite me in the ankle. If she wanted cheese and I gave her something else, a piece of chicken, she'd bite me in the ankle. I had to find what she wanted. She was the, the smartest dog I'd ever seen. I found that her mother was like that too. Extremely intelligent. She was, when I lost her when she was older, I was really hard because she was a little person. But I'll tell you, for the first year, I couldn't get used to this dog because she was so demanding. She'd growl for stuff and lead you to places she wanted and it was just a very unusual dog but soon I realized exactly what was going on and she became the best dog I've ever ever known well if you got squirrels that are being rehabbed and then let go they have no fear of anything they will go into your garden is true they will pull tool off they'll pull things down and people are just part of their lives because after all it was a person that saved their life and that's all they know so they don't have any type of of upbringing by their parents and that's why that's so important so when you are you may be dealing with something completely out of the ordinary that they haven't learned anything from their parents and so it only takes one too if somebody had rehabbed one and let it go after they were done uh, you know it was eating on its own it figured out it could, how it could find food the people maybe left food out for it because they put it in their yard and then of course as it gets older it's going to venture out and get back into so society with other squirrels find a mate but it's going to teach its mate what it knows which is going to be different than what the mate knows and then of course it will might teach its babies the same thing so you end up having a little bit different community of squirrels out there Eventually it will go back to normal because it will lose that trait. Unless you've got somebody constantly rehabbing and letting them go, then you are dealing with something different. And in that case, you may have to get yourself a dog kennel, wire it up, and put your garden in there if that's what you're dealing with. I am out on a hilltop. We have everything here. Coyotes, bobcats. We have mountain lion that goes through here. We have deer. We have pack rats. We have the regular rats. We have mice. We have uh, deer mice, we have everything. And as far as I know, nothing's been rehabbed here. And so I can work with nature because I understand what nature wants to stay away from, what it knows and what it doesn't know. But if I had somebody coming that was catching rats, catching mice, catching squirrels, bottle feeding them, eye drop feeding them and letting them go, it would be a nightmare. No joke, it would be a total nightmare because it wouldn't be the same creature or mannerism that I would be used to and I would then have to reanalyze what I'm dealing with. So I think you may be dealing with that being that you seem to have so many issues. So you may have to just alter your gardening in your area. Uh, I don't know, you know, you haven't explained to me exactly how you're doing it, but off the ground, your ground squirrels don't like to go too far off the ground. And if they're not familiar with it, I have tons of ground squirrels here. They won't go on the chairs. That's not to say someday one, one might jump on there and teach everybody else. But right now they won't go on the chairs. So I don't have ground squirrels in the chairs. They will go into my containers. I see them. They'll find something, maybe a small squash and pull it off or, or a tomato. I've seen them grab tomatoes. They'll grab a tomato and they'll take off with it. Ground squirrels are on the ground. Tree squirrels are in trees, but they come down from the trees. They really prefer trees. And they will look for food too. But they're not familiar with a lot of this stuff, so they don't bother with this, but they will go in the fruit trees and take nuts and fruits and stuff. And that's where the tool works out perfect on my fig trees. I just have to cover what I want to save with tool, T-U-L-L-E. It's a cheap fabric and that does the trick here. And I can cover individual fruits. I don't do the whole tree. There is bird netting, but I don't use bird netting. Bird netting is a whole different fabric. It's got wider holes. It's not tulle. Tulle is very fine. Tulle is what they make slips out of wedding, wedding bales, uh, you know, things like that. Tulle is very small. So birds can land on it and their toenails go into the holes, but it comes right out. Animals can grab it, literally not get hurt with it. If you had it loosely hung, they could grab the tool or land on it and run off. And if you don't have it, you know, on there snug, you might find the tool somewhere else because it got stuck on their nails and they're running from it. They're scared because it got stuck, but not stuck in any way where it's going to hurt it. Bird netting, on the other hand, 
has very big holes in it. I can't remember what that toy is called. It's a toy where you stick your fingers in it. and you, I can't use both fingers because I've got the camera I'm holding. But you put two fingers in it, one on one side, one on the other side. And when you pull, if you remember that, it gets tighter and it gets stuck on your finger. It was made out of um, a grass or a bamboo or, you know, woven and you would stick your fingers in and it was an old thing I had growing up and you'd pull and pull and the harder you pull the tighter it got well that's what bird netting does so a bird gets its leg into the hole it actually gets the whole leg in once the leg is in see my hand well the netting is only as big as my wrist so now they can't get their foot out so the more they try they wind it around and they end up getting caught in the whole thing and literally that's how they trap birds in South America and Africa and different places with a netting like that because they get caught in it, literally caught because they put their leg in there and then they try to pull it out this way and that way and that way and they end up getting their leg caught and they go back on these traps which is a bird netting and they gently pull them out and they sell them or do whatever they're going to do with them. Uh, some keep them for pets and unfortunately if they can't sell them, some eat them the, in the other countries, not here. Bird netting is completely different. Tool, they can't get their leg in. They can only get their toenail, and then it gets right out. They just pull it right out. So that's why I really like tool. Bird netting is just, to me, way too dangerous. Way too dangerous. Because if you're not there to release them, and you literally will have to gently grab them, and probably have to cut them out with a tiny scissors. So I wouldn't suggest using bird netting for your squirrels if you're having a squirrel issue. At that point, depending on your yard, I don't know your setup at all. You may have to put something around the perimeter to keep them out. You may have to reanalyze how your garden is. Everybody's garden is completely different. Um, and the other thing is, if you really want a garden and you've got that many issues, you can get yourself a nice dog run, cheap. Go look for a used dog run and wire the outside with quarter inch wire or half inch wire. And that's the end of your squirrel problem. And you walk in there and leave the top open unless you've got tree squirrels trying to get in. And then make sure it's quarter, uh, half inch so the bees can still get in there and pollinate. Or put things in there that don't need to be pollinated. Like most of your tomatoes are self-pollinating. Some, some of your peppers are self-pollinating. You can grow other things in there. All your greens don't need to be pollinated. Strawberries. Uh, some No, those really do need pollination usually. But think of like, I meant to say radishes and carrots and things like that don't need to be pollinated. You can hand pollinate squash in there. But again, you would be keeping out the birds and the squirrels so you may end up with an insect problem and that's what you have to look at and if you have to at that point i guess you got to get insect spray or powder or whatever hopefully organic so that's basically all i wanted to talk about today just talk about tool um it's worth a try you can buy it on amazon you can buy it on ebay i buy all mine on ebay i was buying it from joann's which is a fabric store talked about that a lot you can easily go in there and buy what you want by the yard. What's a dollar, two dollars a yard, if that. And then try it and see if you like it. It comes in different, you know, stiffnesses and the different fabric type tool. But you pick, it doesn't matter. It seems to me it doesn't matter if it's fine or coarse or whatever. Pick what you, what's going to work for you. And then try it that way. But I get it for $10 a bolt. And you can get it for $9 if you buy four. The bolt is 40 yards by 40. 54 inches I believe it is 52 54 inches and it lasts me forever I bought a ton of it I like black disappears in the garden green the hunter green disappears in the garden it's really nice and dark green but any color will work it doesn't matter color doesn't mean anything Gary likes red because he's wrapping fruit and he wants to be able to go back and spot the fruit right away and so he uses red so that's it so again tool is my favorite it works it's cheap you can't beat it most people will buy one bolt for $10 and that will last them all garden season. And that's all I'm going to talk about today is critters and tool and how tool is safe for birds. I've never had a problem. That's again, there always could be an issue with something, something somewhere, you know, somebody may have an issue because nothing's perfect. But in all the time I've been using tool all over the garden, all over places, I've never had a bird get stuck. So I guess that's it for today. I'm watching a flycatcher now on my truck bed and I just wanted to say hello and I'm gonna go back and have a cookie that I made. I could have done it from scratch but it was cheaper to actually do it this way and have my cup of coffee and sit out here and enjoy nature. 
So have a great day. And I'll put the link be below so you can go look at it. It's an affiliated link. And you can look at that and see. You don't have to buy it there. If you prefer Amazon, buy it wherever you want. But you can look at it and see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll put it down below under the video. So have a great day. Enjoy your day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. You're late. I finished the four cookies. <laughs> I thought you were going to come out here and you didn't come out, so I couldn't help myself. But you'll have to go in. You took cookies already, right? Yeah, I've taken cookies already. Good. I've got to give some to Kitty. Okay, I'm going to start my day. And listen to all the hammering and the banging. I saved you a little bit of cookie. Just a little bit. That's all you get. Okay? That's it.